Dude, it is a 100% increase of the RTX ability of this controller I'm holding NVIDIA. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we do have quite a big show for you for this evening. I'm Vin Stone here at LGC Actual, switching the bits, doing the nightmare fuel, and the man up north. Oh, yes, Big Red himself. Look at him. Mm. I'm so cinnamony. You are. I can. It smells like cinnamon in here. Were you in here? Oh. Yes. That's why I want to burn the I'm, place down. Stay up late past his bedtime down there in the bottom corner is one page of Mateus. <laughs> together with you, Shot Realm Dynamic, the most special barn, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. Yes, that lovable Sunday morning. Man, Disney probably would air it if they thought it would make, make him some money, wouldn't they? <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah. You, we, we, we'd, have, we'd have to, like, make it family friendly, though. Can it be, like, baking soda Voltron? <laughs> I can I can get I can give you crack Voltron, but that's as low as I'm willing to go. Right, right. Can we put a positive <laughs> spin on the um, methamphetamine riddled um, r- 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 riddling Voltron? Maybe <laughs> MDMA Voltron. So before this devolves into what it normally does, uh, let's see what's going on in each other's life organs, man. Because uh, if you pay attention to you know if you're in a Discord and social media. I was quite happy. I've been looking for a RME HDSP 9632, which is the most hipster of um, audio interfaces because it works over this brand new technology called PCI. It's brilliant. Not it's ISA? Great. No. See, Not- I was, I, man, I was going to do a joke. Turns out that um, my AM4 um, Ryzen motherboard has two PCI slots because it's got a PCI bridge chip in it. And I'm like, yeah, I wonder if this is going to work. It's for the inter- interfacing Linux series. And turns out it works. We're actually uh, coming through with that hipster technology. It's kind of brilliant. So if you have any sudden urges to write a fixie or drink PBR, blame it on the RME Hammerfall 9632. But that's going to be a fun video. I thought about doing a thing at the beginning of like, okay, how do we get this installed into a modern PCI Express slot? Like, get like, Lard and like two paper clips. And no, just, just like a hammer and try to like <laughs> bash it into like a dim slot too. Just like not even the right thing. Just cut try to, try to like try to put it into like a front facing USB port on the box. It's like it's not working. Just taped to the case. I'm like, there we go. Nailed it. No, there, there's like no, like literally a nail gun. <laughs> just like nail it. <laughs> just right through it. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Uh the downside is now I have like options for a CBU. We were talking about the pre-pre super shows. And I'm like, great. No, now I found this other thing that I, I don't need. I but this other thing. I'm like, I'm I don't know if I'll be able to like get seventy dollar cables for then. So that's my personal hell. How about you, Jordan? What fresh personal hell have you been up to? Apparently I'm in the business of making million dollar purchases or a oh. little under. Yeah, I'm trying trying to buy a house in Toronto for less than a million dollars. That's a uh, that's a fun adventure isn't that a fun thing to just say I'm like yeah <laughs> i'm i'm still wrapping my brain around it when like i still have to like put a deposit on the house and that's gonna be a fifty thousand dollar check i have not written that large a number on a check ever <laughs> dude yeah <laughs> well, you win home, home ownership yeah, man yeah. yeah top that I, uh, the days. yeah <laughs> Yeah, no, I can't. See, all I did was uh, borrow a laptop from work uh, that is currently in limbo because it's not going to be reissued out or anything. It's a Dell XPS 11. It's one of the uh, two-in-ones, which do the uh, screen foldy bits. And yeah. Is, it does, wait, a minute, uh, wait a minute. Is there a way to disable it from uh, accepting keyboard? Around? No, no. I want it to continue taking keyboard input while oh, it's yeah, in when, when you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there's a uh, firmware flag that you could keep the keyboard enabled while it's uh, folded around the back to, but I really don't want to find it because this works. <laughs> this actually works. And uh, yeah, no, uh, I just took it for testing purposes and I'll be taking it back as soon as I'm uh, done with that. so So, full of it, man. You're just like, I hope they don't miss this. 
Not, knock, knock, knock. F- nor FBI. deny that. <laughs> or, or the British equivalent of FBI. That's what it says in the uniform. British equivalent. I, I can never remember if it's MI5 that's internal or MI6. It's, oh, it's one of the two. Don't worry, Cupcake. You'll find out. Just give it Tom, that. Tom, <laughs> Tom Cruise will just show up in your house and be like... Dun, 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 dun. It's like rip his face off and it's Tom Cruise. Oh no. But but you know what? If we if we if we look at uh what's uh Tom Cruise rips it off his face and he's Tom Cruise, what the fuck? Maybe maybe if maybe if we take the mask off the horse it'll be Tom Cruise. Nah, it's just the steam Hey, look, that echo's actually going to make it to the recording, unlike last week when I royally ah, cocked that. Um, Steam 2020 <laughs> year in review, baby. There's a bunch of stuff, a bunch of hot stuff in here. They do give it a mention. Look at this, man. 120 million monthly active players. 62.6 million daily active players. 24.8 pink, con- pink, yes, pink concurrent players. Players. What about the blue concurrent players? Uh, we don't talk about the blue concurrent players. Uh, but a couple of things, bullet points from this, uh, from the Steam blog. Uh, Steam China is going to be launching in 2021. They are working on user experience improvements. Valve still has plans. Brace yourself to, which I believe is just currently, it's just a running joke at this point, to update the Steam mobile app. Mm-hmm. <laughs> If we could get such advanced features of like being able to use the authenticator on, I don't know, two devices, that'd be brilliant, Steam. Uh, more ways to reward users, stuff that I don't t- particularly care about. They're going to continue investing in Linux tech and um, Steam Lab stuff. I don't know, man. At the end of the day, you can say what you want about Steam, uh, but I will firmly stand by that. In the past five to seven years, Steam has done more for Linux gaming than, than to everyone in the history of forever combined. Does I that sound like a fair the statement? One, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, it's I, the know, one AAA games publisher that seems to actively give a damn about Linux. And yeah, the, the Proton may not have been ideal in a lot of people's minds, and I kind kind of sort of i can kind of sort of see the um argument behind that but i very much look forward to something that will supplement it or improve on what it's already done yeah thank you Val. appreciate well, it well yeah yeah and like <laughs> I, I mean, like the pandemic has killed everyone else's productivity, but not Valve. They're they're getting shit done. I was so yeah, they, born for this. Yeah, they, they they had a lot of stuff done. The article goes over it. Ben talked about it, but yeah, hopefully we start seeing more investment in where we keep seeing more investment in cross platform tech. Uh, more like AAA publishers or third party publishers saying like, oh, we're not going to release a Linux version, but here's a preview, here's a pre release, so that you can at least get it running under Proton, and like less less so yay, but it's still nice getting more partnerships i'd like to see like maybe one with ubisoft uh or microsoft for like the ea thing where you can like pay and get games for reduced cost or be able to try them out and they're all getting certified under proton anyways so that just expands the available library make sure that their anti-cheats whatever anti-cheat they are implemented they're like oh yeah these these guys are playing it on proton it's fine so more more of that what do, would be nice what do we think about the data bits delivered by valve man Exabytes. 2.52 Exabytes. i mean, yeah. Games are big. They're big and not really able to be compressed all that well. So yeah, like I think it's a lot. Neat. Yeah, I just like big numbers like that. I, I I can't logically really wrap my head around them, but I'm like that that's a big number, man. Yes, it's l- certainly larger than the one I'm putting on that down payment. Climb <laughs> <laughs> nice. it. Yeah, there's a, there's a client update update. It's a very small one. Came out on January 11th. And the big thing is, if you powered off your computer while you had a Switch Pro controller plugged in via USB, that Switch Pro controller would not wake up. Now it will. I didn't run into this problem. My problem was that I had a crappy USB-C cable that kept falling out of the back of the slot. And because USB-C <laughs> is not a good connector. I mean, it's great for speed, but it's not good for actually staying on the thing. Right. Well, I, I mean, look on the bright side. At least you weren't playing like an online multiplayer game beat em up type thing. No, that would be the worst. No. And it's, pa- it's pausing every five seconds. Yeah, that the game automatically paused when it disconnected its connected controller. <laughs> In, indeed go back and watch i think it was in part one or part two that, no, that, that, that was in part two. that was that was part, that was the very beginning of part did, two did you want then... to see me like genuinely get cross that <laughs> okay 
<laughs> but I, I knew you couldn't do anything about it except use it wirelessly. Yeah, yeah. It's just like okay, let's let's play the which controller is going to work right now. Oh, I got to restart the game. Okay, well, I got to restart the game. Uh, but yeah, uh, one one peripheral that is not getting enough love, according to some person, is uh, the Vive. Half Life, Alex, man, it's so mainstream. Not really. I did see a um, some number digits thrown out that like almost two. The road to VR is like almost two million. VR headsets have been plugged into the Steams, which is kind of neat, man. But this comes from the Escapist magazine, and they're throwing down that Alex is just completely underrated. It's not mainstream. People don't love it enough, and everyone should bow before it. To which I'll retort. Quite simply, I'm pretty sure anyone running a system halfway capable of playing Half-Life Alex owns a copy. Yeah, I oh, mean, yeah. it 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 bear it bear. It's been said before, but it re- bears repeating. The game is really expensive if you don't own a VR headset. It's like thirteen hundred dollars to buy if you want the good one. And and I mean, like, okay, to the guy's credit, yeah, Alex is a good game. People really like it. It doesn't get a lot of mainstream attention, but if you think about what Valve was trying to do with Alex, it actually it succeeded in basically every way it needed to. You, they wanted to create a compelling VR experience from the people who are like actually involved with creating the technology to show people this is the kind of shit you can pull off if you put in the effort right. and i mm-hmm. think they they did that like you have people using like half uh alex as a base for like virtual classrooms and stuff they're like here's here here's a place to start from and i think we hadn't we hadn't really had a high quality vr experience like alex and that definitely sets the stage for more but again market penetration is a thing people don't have money to spend on vr headsets these days so people aren't going to experience it but one thing you can say about uh, alex sold vr headsets it, it did. i mean what do you think the percentage of people out there that are uh, i own one game <laughs> half life alex yeah i fucked around i drew some dicks in virtual paint but outside of that that i spent a lot of time on that piano and the whiteboard with the chalk long goran, on a time <laughs> goran just be- ripping people's arms off and beating them to death with them is catharsis but yeah, the one person that I know that actually has a VR headset and he, lighthouses and everything else set up, co-worker Dave, um, he uh, he bought Alex on release because he saw that as like, oh god, yes. And it is quite possibly the best case example that you can show people. It's like, look, this is what VR can do. It looks amazing. It let you do it gives you all of that freedom that you kind of need in order to feel immerse oh i said the i word again uh the <laughs> you actually get sucked into the game but it's it's not a mainstream platform as jordan mentioned it's a very high barrier of entry when you have to spend at least uh a thousand uh pounds on the uh the vive and the lighthouse well, this is never necessarily true because you can play it with like the oculus right you can um, play it with the oculus quest yes um <laughs> I, I i mean uh alex the guy who we're interviewing later on the show he's in he's in uh irc right now he's saying he p- played it on a 200 pound or a 200 euro head like cheapo headset right so yeah. mm-hmm. it, it's not it's not the worst thing in the world but again like if i'm looking at it i'm like oh i i have the money to spend i bought a nice computer i kind of want to have a this good gr I, I think basically you can sum it up like this for yes it, overall 100 percent. it's not a mainstream game but it through the lens of people who own vr systems it was the fucking blockbuster compared to yes. everything else i mean that's what the, that's what people showed up for so i think it did all right indeed cameras <laughs> friends children one, yeah one thing that valve did that didn't do so well was steam os uh it was a very good first implementation but it needed some development on top of that which never really happened and on the other hand, we have uh, GamerOS, or Gamerus, Gamerus, which uh, is up to version 22 now, and it is that uh, distribution that's totally Arch, but it's not Arch, but it's it uses everything that's it's, Arch. It's built off Arch, but it's yes. not Arch. Yeah. So uh, with this version, you get Linux kernel 5.10.2, Mesa 20.3.2, and the NVIDIA 460.32.03 drivers, which you need uh if you're running that kernel and you also get an update to the steam uh steam os compositor plus which is one of the amazing things 
that uh, Gamerus does on top of uh, regular SteamOS because the default uh, Steam, SteamOS compositor, it's broken. There are certain games that you just can't run with it because the window for the game spawns below uh, the Steam Big Picture Mode one, so you can't see the game. Some of it's like a little adventure, Pedro. <laughs> Adventure is one thing. Not actually seeing the thing that you're trying to play is another. It's an adventure, uh, but yeah. yeah. Are, are you trying to say uh, it's the, the Dark Souls of... Um... It, it, it's yes. the Dark Souls of trying to navigate in a dark room? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, SteamOS Compositor Plus fixes a, a lot of those issues, and they have a few more fixes with this release. They also include uh, Steam Tweaks and uh, Steam Buddy, which allows you to play uh, games from other platforms in... Gamerous. Uh, so it's in not, this it's not one, like Bonzi Buddy. Nope. No, no, no. It, it, it's it. You can get about as frisky, but no. <laughs> the uh, this one it comes with new two Steam Buddy platforms, GOG and 3DO. There's a big uh, asterisk in front of GOG to say that support is preliminary, and it comes with some caveats. Uh, DOS games don't currently launch. Uh, download game progress is not shown, and there's no. Uh, updating games so you'll have to yeah. manually uninstall and install yeah. them again <laughs> all, all of these all of these updates serve the expansion of their supported games lists which are most of which they added are native uh overcooked children of morta indivisible blah 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 blah, blah. i think gree uh needs wine uh but the other ones don't um yeah no no dos games if you want to play that on oh. gamma Rus. one thing that kind of interested me though is apparently they're using podman to do some stuff in the background which is kind of neat podman is a docker alternative that i've been playing around with um and it's rootless which is the big thing uh mm -hmm. so you can't accidentally fuck up your system through a docker container accidentally challenge accepted uh, that's what you think <laughs> <laughs> yeah um but yeah it's, it's it's good to see this project chug along um yeah they're, they're they're definitely trying and the certificate the certified games list is more frequently updated than valves which you know get on them for that well jordan can i ask you a very serious question no serious what, what fine is this? pedro Lin um can Linux i ask you a very cast? serious question i make no promises both of you are dead to me by the way um <laughs> Have you ever been so bored that you reversed Steam's login? I I haven't, but this guy has. Yeah, so this is from uh, alspace.xyz. Links, all this stuff is in our show notes. So yeah, this guy starts dicking around and trying to reverse engineer Steam's login process. He starts this little article with a preamble of like, well, why don't you use HTTPS? Blah, blah, blah. There are a bunch of scenarios where tr uh, passwords transmitted over HTTPS aren't actually encrypted because they need to be stored in a header that needs to be... Uh, Inspectable in order to route the traffic properly. That's what TLS uh, deals a lot with. Um, but once upon a time, there was a time before Let's Encrypt where you could just get a free SSL certificate. And it turns out Valve has done some pretty clever stuff with ensuring that your password is encrypted client side before being sent to their authentication servers. And this guy breaks down a little bit of what he discovered and what he theorizes to be the login method. And it's it's just kind of neat. Um, not really gaming related, but it's always fun to understand how your platforms of choice work. Um, yeah, it's very nice. Uh, you know, the whole having that extra bit of encryption on top of the SSL uh, encryption to secure your password, uh, just in case either your SSL uh, connection is. Either it didn't work or more likely was hijacked. Um, would my question is, would introducing that extra bit of uh, encryption to your username as well, would it be that demanding on the system or the server to do it wherever it needs to be done? Because if not, double complete encryption for the deets that you're sending to actually log in. Sounds pretty good to me. Yeah, the, the trick you really want to do is implement some sort of like single sign on shit like SAML. Uh, but yeah, that, 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 that is actually one request I have for Steam. I know that Va Va Valve, Gabe, you're, you're listening to this religiously and taking direction. But mm -hmm. please have some support for like alternative identity providers like. Ven complains about the uh, the the login application, but like I would just like to integrate it into like Okta or or Authy or something Authy, like that. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. Authy would be nice. <laughs> I'd be down with that. But don't worry, Jordan. They're working on it. Eventually, <laughs> 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 is um, when it will come out. I am only half joking when I think it's just a running joke inside of Valve. Like, yeah, 
No, you can imagine. Yeah, we'll get Google Authenticator yeah. at some point. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> so, do you got something in your front pocket for us? Because I was kind of excited when I saw this. Uh, it, it totally isn't a Game Boy. Uh, it is. Uh, it could very well be a remote controller for a remote controlled car which i'm a big fan of that particular genre and pocket cars has been dangling pocket in my sights for a long long time and with update version 074 it's still in early access but uh, with this one multiplayer mode is available uh, they had already planned it but they were trying to get everything else in place before they started doing that and yes you have multiplayer you can create joint servers use matchmaking when Pedro select regions that, it's going to be 55 minutes of this shit followed by five minutes of racing I mean, that was, uh, that was no. the first half of my <laughs> Disco Elysian stream. It's just like agonizing over character creation. So I get it. All right. Uh, you saw me play Scraps. You saw how long I spent on that. Uh, the uh, Yeah, you can um, get matchmaking, region-based matchmaking. Uh, there's uh, race events, weapons, car tires. Oh, my God. I was joking video. Why did you take me serious? That's all you are. <laughs> but, yeah, the, what they don't have implemented yet are, like, private rooms. So you can just play with specific friends. Uh, like, steam uh full-on steamworks integration that you can just join people uh and invite people from steam there's no arena mode uh, uh physical objects like the random objects in the map they're not synchronized yet so just because you knock something over uh on your side doesn't mean other people will see it uh, there's no event playlist so it's single event only and you can't really vote for the next the event yet I gotta, I gotta say that level in the trailer that Venger showed gives me some big super tux cart vibes. Really? Yeah, like the, the like the, you know the level where you're like in the toy in the toy room or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, that. dude, I, yeah. Uh, Michael, um, one of our fabulous patrons, uh, does the thing where just randomly <laughs> buys us his games and he's like, "But mm -hmm. I bought you all the same game. No, you must play it. Ha ha ha. Um, <laughs> play it with me." <laughs> and one of those games was uh, Sonic uh, Racing. All Stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That mansion and. Uh, level. I went back and like looked at the chronology of it. I was like, "Oh, that's where uh, Super Tux Card, whoever did that level, just like copy, Yo yoinked paste." It. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing against Super Tux Card. We love it, and we're fantastic that it's got online multiplayer. This looks interesting. This looks. I love a little arcade racer like this because it's something me and Patriot can just dick around on a stream with. And hey more it only kind of works the more entertaining it is gonna you know. <laughs> for, for, for yeah, the audience like, not right. for uh no not for like, us we're gonna be frustrated as hell but <laughs> right, right it'll be delightful with you at home i i love these kinds of games i've been playing revolt since it came out in 99 yeah. so yeah getting some of that in the 21st century yes please <laughs> do you think we'll ever get um rtx for now it, the floor kind of gave me some RTX, like the, the shiny reflections. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. Maybe, maybe if you crack open a booster pack. Mm. <laughs> As we wait on you. you. Artifact. Will it ever come out? We don't know. <laughs> but. Maybe. Maybe. But, you know, on again, off again, love it or hate it relationship it's had with the internet. This is just a little update from SteamDB. And it's like Source 2 is possibly getting an RTX ray tracing, is possibly getting RTX ray tracing support. Last artifact beta, ray tracing shader, and RTX strings have been added. To which I'm not even going to name the outlet. Um, a mainstream, I, I just saw the headline, you know, like the day after this. And it was like, RTX enabled Half-Life 3. Like, mm -hmm. You were full of shit. A like <laughs> also B and C, and that's that's all the numbers I know. So yeah, I don't I don't know. I guess good good on them for still supporting the three people you know actually paying for this game, um, buying booster packs. I I just want to know um is is the ray tracing for the ultra realistic olive oil cards? <laughs> like, I I. I, I I mean, from 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 a from a realistic level, I could see them doing that just to like, okay, we figured out ray tracing, we put it in the engine, and here's the proof of concept and artifact, blah blah blah, right? No, it clearly means that we're getting a, a new lighting effects. 
Yeah, that that would have been a much better use. Uh, but yeah, no, I guess there's a lot of lighting effects and particle stuff. And whenever you do uh, like an attack or use one of the abilities of one of the things, you it, know, somebody, somebody yeah. else watching this and there's like, you know what? And fuck all three of them. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I was gonna say like what furiously taking notes like we added RTX support but what the fuck do we do with it oh all the foil cards <laughs> I don't know I mean if you're if you're gonna start small um, <laughs> uh, foil cards are a pretty good way to make extra money on top of your BS card game the, the only thing I will say to this is it would be fantastic to have the second game on Steam that I can utilize um, RTX with um, outside of the uh, popular Bethesda title Quake 2 RTX um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that that new game give me a benchmark in this and we'll call it Avens like I'll buy it just to have the benchmark where I could have to maybe embarrass it and watch like the half point five tensor wiggle that I have in the 2060 like just shake and fall over it's great I love doing that all right yeah I'm a simple human being indeed Unlike this, Super Smash, that is not, not, there's nothing simple about this. It could be very simple, but it could be terribly complex. I mean, that, and that's the truth. Like, it could be very simple or very complex because this is a game that generates other games for you to play. And that's that's kind of interesting. Um, then in the in the notes, you're like, this can either be like neat or this is either going to be a complete fu- clusterfuck. And I'm I'm kind of agreeing with you. De- I guess depending on your seed, right? It's either going to be like some super awesome poignant thing, or it's just going to be like no. Oh, fuck this these games suck <laughs> i i don't think there's gonna be that squishy center with this this is gonna be is this drugs or it's just gonna be shit you know yeah yeah but like the, it, it's neat i like seeing games like this that are trying to experiment with like the concept of randomization and how far you can take it procedurally generating games and levels and mechanics is something i would like to see explored um systems that create systems right like mm-hmm. it's it's pretty cool that <laughs> at, at this point why not? Because you already have games that have introduced uh, some sort of randomized content, be it levels, enemies, items, whatever. But how about you completely randomly generate a game, a whole game, no. just every single time you start the thing, a whole new game, completely randomly generated? I think... Yes. At this point, we need someone to go whole hog on the whole RNG thing and just do it all. Do it all RNG I, style. Wait a minute. So, 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 so you want a sequel to Minecraft? Yeah, it was called Tent of the and then that got canceled. <laughs> Yeah, that was uh, that was already in development, and then someone leaked the source code, and uh, I guess Notch went. Well, I have a shit ton of money. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> good, good, goodbye, children. <laughs> so up next is something we've talked about before, and I, is it finally out? Uh, uh, it, it is. is. Yeah. It's a Skelly Boy or a Skell Boy refractured, and it, you play a Skippy the Square, Skippy who the is skeleton. a. Yeah, um, a flexible skeleton in his uh, cute action uh, RPG. And yeah, now that Superland has basically, you know, refused to Linux without Proton anymore. You know what? This Good game, on him, though, because he's like, I'd never test the Linux build. I just took your money yeah, for it. Yeah, I just... I just pressed export and away we go. Uh, but yeah, now this game has a very, very comfy, uh, very comfy spot to actually sit on. And although... I'm pretty sure the puzzles in uh, Superland will uh, still outpace the puzzles here by a very, very long shot. But the whole game gives me that very same vibe of like the cutesy art style, but there's an actual game in the whole thing. I like that. <laughs> I, I mean, like, Super Superland had more to do with, like, oh, it's the cutesy art style. There is a dude crucified here. What the fuck? This is... Um, <laughs> well, but it had the meme Jesus face. <laughs> right, yeah. But, but but I guess there was also some the dude just straight thing. up... <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, so I, I played the demo of this a little bit because uh, they have a free demo that is free. Mm-hmm. It plays a lot like A Link to the Past that has a body part switching mechanic because like if you kill enemies, you can take their like weapons or like their their 
their heads or whatnot and gain their abilities, which is kind of neat. And it also has some nicer camera work. I'm not sure if I like the whole 2D on 3D thing. That doesn't quite sit well with me. I see it's a stylistic like a, choice. Now. It, it, it is. It's but two and a half D. Two and a half D. <laughs> Crypt of the Necrodancer did that, and I wasn't too keen so on it either. go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah, I, I so go fuck yourself 9,000. Yeah. Hey, Ma- Mount Dash T. Look at the bright side. You do not need a video card to play this. You just no. need an operating system processor, some memory, and some storage, man. But only, only Apparently relates it to runs on LTS. IGP. <laughs> <laughs> it, it better. It's a fucking minuscule ass game. So what's that running right. at uh, 1989? It's currently on sale right now at 17. 10% off. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's 2051 in Canadian dollars off sale. It is 2279. So but go fuck with a free demo. See if you like it. <laughs> Indeed. Coming up next. What the hell is even next? We talk, we the talk news. about, we talk about measuring e with video RAM. Right around now, you're probably expecting us to talk about some regular literacy news, maybe some tech. Well, uh, that's going to have to wait, because before we get to that, we need to Shell for NVIDIA? make ourselves... Well, <laughs> let's not go down that road just yet. Uh, but uh, now we do need to very much advertise ourselves to you, because... Uh, Promote? Self promotion? How does that? Yes. <laughs> Let's be honest. We're pretty shit at that. We really we are. are. We, sh- we should be taking. <laughs> we should be taking every opportunity to plug patreoncom slash Yeah. The best place you can go to support us it's to get so such awesome. extra. To get such extra Linux Gamecast content as the pre pre super shows and or access to our Discord channel or our show notes. Yes. Mm? That mm? sounds like a brilliant idea. And support independent media. Nah. What? And allow us to do more things? Mm, yeah. That sounds like, pretty such, dangerous. Like, like <laughs> and join the ranks of cool people like our newest Patreon, Zeno, or Basil, who increased his pledge? What? He's a sea monster now. Gentlemen, this is madness. <laughs> I don't know if I can support it. I don't, I, I don't it's fine, know. I support it. Jeez. I don't know. You're maybe, twist maybe, maybe, maybe twisted my arm. <laughs> maybe there's some other way. Maybe you want to actually get like a physical object in return for your support. Maybe maybe we should think about maybe telling the people about store.linuxgamecast.com. That's I don't know. so a thing, man. Um, put us all over your face, chest. Uh, wait, let's see. Do we? Yeah, we got face, chest. We don't have anything for the neck. We don't have scarves. It's a damn shame. Frank scarves. Okay, we, okay, that could happen. We, we have got sti- masks. You know what? Listen, live a little bit. Take one of our diecast stickers. Put that bad boy right on your neck. It'll Why do you have a chair off. on your neck? Oh, no, 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 no. What, what, what you do is you take a bunch of nicotine patches and you stick them to the opposite side of the sticker, and then you yeah, right on the neck. That, that's the branding we need. We need LGC nicotine patches. Yes. <laughs> That way, Linux Gamecast can literally give you cancer. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> Pedro and Jordan have a wish list. If you want to pick up anything for them, that's brilliant because you get to send a note and I make them read it. And no matter what it says, as long as we can say it and not get banned on Twitch, it is fair game. If you want your name back here, man, on the fine upstanding cannibal wall, like Carl, Mike, Basil, can I read it? Or Theron, Linux, Nuru, Aldius, and Noctilus. Maybe. I read that as Nautilus. Well, I can, I are read good. <laughs> well, shit. <laughs> Shut up for a minute and go play with your bowling ball bag of hands while I do this. Uh, we have a studio wish list zone, and that's the thing. <laughs> you can <laughs> make me read stuff, and you, I can shame you each and every week and in all the videos that we have back there, because Daddy totally needs a $70 fucking cable. Um, <laughs> that's it, beautiful people. Now, let's talk about the horrible, mean, bad, poopy head company nvidia you mean amd and it nvidia is the best we love nvidia right please send us some video cards we love ray tracing mm. oh yes we'll talk about all that ray tracing on quake 2 for that is the one game that has it on linux we get to talk about this though because <laughs> there was a bit of controversy about this nvidia has introduced the rtx 3060 but no, no 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 that was 3060 ti this is 3060 oh so it's gonna be less well maybe kind of but it's got 12 gigajoules of memory ram on it and it's cheaper (laughs) to everyone who's bought a 30 series card um in unison went fucking really and nvidia is like just give us some money bitch what you got to do it's a little bit faster than 
a 1080. So you're looking at 329 and about 10 to 15 percent more performance than a 2060, which is neat. Uh, it's about 10 percent higher MSRP, not quite as fast as 1080 Ti. So Jordan, you're safe. And <laughs> I'm looking to them CUDA digits because that's what I'm interested in. Because I don't know Nvidia. I don't know who you think this fucking market to do. I I don't. But I know damn well content creators are going to look at 12 gigajoules of memory RAM and all them CUDA cores. And they're going to be like 329 and they're going to get out their wallet and they're still not going to be able to fucking buy it because you paper launch everything, man. So maybe sometime next year you can entertain that thought. But I like the idea when it becomes a real boy, hopefully at some point in the future, um, just the fact that it's got the memory RAM, it's got the CUDA cores, and it's stupid cheap and it's like it can technically can play games. This is going to be very difficult to get. Pedro's yeah. like just pissing all over it. He's like, I'm getting a 2060 <laughs> Ti. I'm looking for the 3060 Ti like I'm sure a lot of people are because supposedly the MSRP on that one is uh, 399 So that's 399 US dollars, which means it's basically one to one to, you know, a pound sterling. So I'm looking for uh, 3060 Ti's that cost um 399 pounds it's very hard to find one that's in stock that's less than 750 pounds and you can sure as shit bet that i'm not going to spend that much on a video Jordan, card i gotta like, ask you a question though man do you <laughs> think with this 3060 non-ti technology that i will be able to play quake 2 rtx at 1080p <laughs> at a blistering 60 frames per second I believe you will be able to play it about as well as it can play Curse of the Ravens Cry. Ooh, okay, that's ooh. <laughs> that's a whole different bag of cattle. Right? Bag of cattle? Bag, bag of, of cattle. cattle. <laughs> Buy your Pedro branded bagged cows at your so, local Tesco. Well, that's one bag of the of things cattle. you were talking okay. about, man. Like, you know, <laughs> Nvidia is very clear. They're like, hey, man, this thing doesn't have once, not thrice. Merely twice the raster performance and 10 times the ray tracing of GTX right. 1060. Which, I mean, I, I love that's like saying, man, this broom doesn't suck up dirt the same way my vacuum cleaner does. Dude, it is a 100% <laughs> increase of the RTX ability of this fucking controller I'm holding in video. I mean. <laughs> right. right, right. I, I, I guess technically it can do ray tracing at like two frames a second, as we've seen with the software based like NVIDIA ray tracing extension. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't know. Mm. It's like a hardware wise. Wouldn't it be like uh, infinity percent better? Listen, I, wh how dare you speak ill of NVIDIA's marketing? Yes. You should prostrate yourself and lick their Did fucking you get the memo? boots. We need to focus more on RTX, both of well, the one game we have. With That's RTX. what I'm saying. I mean, it didn't have RTX. Now it does. So it's infinitely better. No, no, no. Why we're, are we getting, restricting we're, it to 10x? We're getting artifact, you guys. We're getting artifact with ray tracing. There are two games. It's fine. Yeah. Buy, buy more video cards. Oh. Two whole games. Listen, oh. I mean, we can't be doing marketing because you can't buy the damn cards. So no. I, yeah. I, I don't know. How, how's RTX support on Wine these days? Mm. I mean, considering Proton just uh, fakes all NVIDIA video cards as AMD, probably not so good. But hey, Wine is actually doing pretty good. Uh, they've just announced version 6 by now. It's the latest stable version. So... Um, the big differences here are what we've been talking about when, uh, whenever we catch one of the wine releases on the show. It's basically the core modules are now in the portable executable format. So your uh, NT32s, NTDLLs, kernel 32s, GDI 32s, etc., etc. Uh, those are all in portable uh, executable format, which should minimize some of the issues with like anti-cheat software or security uh focused stuff looking at your wine install and going that's not windows this should help alleviate that somewhat there's more uh vkd 3d support uh built it directly into wine which is very nice uh and one other thing that kind of surprised me is they now have a second CSMT implementation because you used to have the previous CSMT which enabled uh, processors with more threads to be able to better spread the load and that would 
actually result in tangible performance benefits to some games. But now you can have the second mode, which enables complete uh, multi-serialization within uh, a specific job within a specific application. So that just makes it all even uh, more multi-threaded than it was before. And yeah, like I mentioned the previous method, it had tangible benefits, but the big thing that made the um, most difference when it came to performance was DX uh, or D9VK. That was a significant performance impact. So yeah, they they need to get that Vulcan sorted. <laughs> well, I I think I think too the the idea behind that is they they have said that like DXVK has very different project goals than Wine does, and so they want to make sure that they have their own stuff in house. Um, so it, it's good to see that they have those bases covered, even if you know we, for gaming at least there there's a faster moving option. Yeah. Um, the other thing we're seeing in this release is more of uh, Gloria Segrol's Media Foundation stuff is being upstream. We saw it pro- upstreamed into Proton Experimental. It has apparently landed itself in mainstream wine now, which is good news for everyone. Mm -hmm. Um, The other thing that's coming in with this release, which I'm not interested for the immediate benefit, but they're they're working on getting implementation support for the M1 processor, which in a couple of years, um, when we start seeing some like more mainstream ARM stuff, I want to see some like high powered ARM wine shenanigans. Like, let's see how far we can actually push it. Like, that would be kind of neat. That's going to be interesting. Um... Does this do anything for like online multiplayer or are we still taking baby steps to I th- that's still I think, in baby step mode? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, th- I think Valve is still working on the syscall dispatcher in Proton because that's like a pretty substantial architectural change in yeah. one. So, yeah, we will wait with bated breath, but figgy pudding. Is a thing. Yes, figgy pudding, Mister Figs. Uh, it's a project on GitHub. You can find links in our show notes. Uh, it is primarily pie game, which is nice. It's a fun little hobby game, where turn-based Mister Bomberman type game puzzler. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Baba is You in I sort know, of the man. movement I'm, aspects. I'm, I'm looking at the. I'm guessing stairs, man. Zelda gonna sue somebody. Yeah, there's, there's <laughs> definitely some uh, some Zelda assets, um, but. Yeah, uh, it's it's available. Uh, you can check it out. One interesting thing, if you scroll down a little bit, um, he re- did a write up on his game's implementation of undo functionality in Pi Game. So if you want to check that out, if you are a game developer who's working in Pi Game and want to implement some sort of undo functionality similar to like Baba or Steven Sausage Roll, this guy shows you how to do, do not it. So encourage it anyone to make more Baba. <laughs> more oh. Baba. The world needs more Baba. Uh, but yeah, the, when I first looked at this, it's, uh, oh, it's uh, not entirely sure how to say this in English, but in Portuguese, we used to call it Paganitsu. And yes, it's that Guess boulder uh, dragging uh, game. Uh, really, really old one, too. And with the, the whole bombs mechanics, like, oh, Paganitsu meets uh, Bomberman. Okay. Then, all right. Fair. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's there. It's free. Go check it out. Links to this will be in the show notes. Um, now, speaking of stuff that's there and free, um, Gear Hit Arena. I saw this and I was getting into the breach vibes, Pedro. Uh, yes and no. <laughs> yes, also is- no. <laughs> yeah, the, the well, yes, I but no, absolutely but also yes. get but also no. where you're uh, coming from, because if you just look at the screenshots and whatnot, uh, it absolutely does uh, remind you of um, Into the Breach, but this is more of a RPG. Still roguelike, but there is uh, more RPG elements to it rather than just the strategic sort of three mech the, the, chess yeah <laughs> chess chess would be the the way i described it yeah it's three mech chess uh that's what into the breach is kind of the thing that it's trying to do and it works very well that game is amazing uh yes. but yeah this one is more of a roguelike uh mech rpg as they describe it and gearhead caramel which is the newer version um there's already been Gearhead Arena and Gearhead 2, which are currently free on itch. But what, what with... about Gearhead Daggerfall? 
There isn't one yet. Or, or, or Gearhead Skyrim. <laughs> or Gearhead Morrowind. Or Gearhead um, That's what, well, you Amberfell. Know, because those, those fucking dragons were clearly running Python. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, the big one here is that they are adding uh, modding support to Gearhead Caramel. You can basically write your own campaign. Uh, there's a template file that you can download from Dropbox. And then, yeah, just drop it into the correct folder and everything will sort of kind of maybe hopefully work good luck <laughs> it's uh it's a very good way and as we uh will discuss later on maybe introducing community tools for people to create content for your game it's a good thing quit quit do not predict the future <laughs> We've been just, over just, this. Just quit. Just give, just give yeah, up on stop. that. <laughs> okay, you can go now. <laughs> uh, That's all well, we got for that. It's time to bomb some Dodongos. Oh, oh boy. Shit, some. Oh, man. So you might have heard about this. <laughs> nope. uh, they did a speedrun of this on AGDQ a couple days ago. Uh, they gave this project a shout out. So someone has gone and uh, re-engineered the Legend of Zelda, Faces of Evil, and Zelda, Wand of Gamelon, the uh, Philips CDI Zelda game slash Nightmare Fuel that um, very few people actually owned. Uh, oh, God. I'm, That's so the king, you get the to king. play as Zelda in the yeah, Wand of Gamelon. The, the, it's like the second Zelda game where you actually get to play as Zelda. Also, the king's lips are horrifying. They will give you nightmares forever. Um, so... Here's the thing, though. All the links, dead. All the links to this page are dead. Um, Archive.org is to the rescue, though. It has the Linux binaries backed up. There's a torrent very, now. So. Yeah, the, that link to that torrent is dead, but it's not dead on Archive.org. Oh. Yeah, this, 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 is, this, is where, this is where it got a little crazy. Uh, so I waited two hours for the zip <laughs> file to download from Archive.org, and mm -hmm. it starts up on Fedora, probably will start up on Debian, on KDE, nobody uses it. I have, I have nobody. I have no idea. Um, but the... But yeah, uh, it launches, but I can't really do anything. I'm stuck in the menu. I literally pressed every button on my keyboard and nothing happened. I, so, I thought it was just like an immediate uh, defensive uh, measure from your, like, from your, the Ryzen, yeah. No, 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 just from like your <laughs> fucking brain stems. Like, no, don't do anything no for this. No. Yeah. Uh, well, does but, it require but, the stupid CDI uh, little remote controller thing? <laughs> no. So like this, this is all this is all done in PC. Uh, the, the guy on the speed run was saying like this is you, you can play through the entire thing. Uh, it's fully implemented. Uh, but yeah, um, I don't I don't know why all the links are disappearing. I'm gonna. Just, Hazard a guess that it's some Nintendo DMCA bullshit. Well, you gotta be honest, though. Like, if Nintendo's going after this from the Philips CDI, this I think this is gonna be the first time that they've ever issued like DMCAs out of like shame. Yeah, well, it's like, it's please, like, oh god, no. Well, it's, it's, it's that it stupid die. thing where, where you have to like protect the trademark or you lose it, and so. <laughs> Well, they sure as fuck weren't doing a good job protecting it back when these things were made. Well, listen, you had to... Listen, <laughs> they were Nintendo, glad to give it away. <laughs> Nintendo had to fuck over Sony. Philips offered them a better deal, and they yes. got a worse product this as a result of giving them less money. This part of um, Nintendo creating the Sony PlayStation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it, Nintendo it has basically that. turning Sony into the monster that it is today Good in the idea. gaming. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. In all fairness, Nintendo's <laughs> like, yeah, we're fucking struggling. You're like, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's so, how's that switch doing? <laughs> indeed. So coming up next, uh, we don't have a chair acquisition this week. We got yeah, an we interview do. with. We do. Yeah. We got, we got, we, but we, our chair acquisitions, we gotta... we're gonna. Give someone the Cherquisition. We don't have to give ah, Cherquisition. Oh, we're oh. going to give a person the Cherquisition. Yes. Ah, okay. Ah, ah. And that lovely person is Alex Romain of uh, Project Heartbeat, so dum, stay dum. tuned for that. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are here with Alex. It is Alex, right? You don't pronounce that yes. like Chainsaw Master Slayer or something. And uh. <laughs> No, it is Alex. Okay, yeah. fine. I'll stick with Alex, man. He, he's the mad genius behind Project Heartbeat, and he's going to tell us a little bit about it, man, because uh, from the blurb, you know, it's a cute community-driven rhythm game inspired by such titles as, you know, him, Clone Hero, Project Diva, featuring music from Eurobeat stuff, man. That's kind of neat. That's kind of neat. We got the Steam page. Uh, what's the best way to search for the game, Alex? 
because we were talking um, before we started recording, and it's like a Project Heartbeat. So I ended up having to do Project Heartbeat game because Google was trying to teach me how to bring people back from the beyond. Yeah, the game doesn't have the presence yet on Google that mm. I would love it to have. Mm-hmm. But the way most people reach the game, um, and it's a little, little dirty secret, um, you know how many games are clone games, right? Mm-hmm. Well, Project Heartbeat is a clone game too. It's a, ge- a clone of a game called Project Diva. Um, so mo- most people reach it that way. So it's like searching around for um, clone diva. Clone diva. Uh, Project Diva clone. Yeah, like ah. that's how people get to it usually. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Right. Okay. Uh, so before we get started, uh, let's just find out like what is the game? Like if you're going to explain it to somebody like me, somebody uh, I think universally everybody knows what dance dance revolution is that's my touchstone because i'm old and <laughs> to be fair the only reason i watch ddr videos in 2021 is for the same reason i watch like racing videos i just want to see people get wrecked but um what what's the game about i mean outside do you play it with a controller do you play it with a um, Keyboard, keyboard control. Well, you can, you can play with whatever you want. Uh, the game actually, like the, the the way the mechanics work, they are playable with like everything you want. Um, so, I play with a keyboard. Uh, a lot of people play with controllers, and there's also a spe- specific controller that's um, that you can get that's similar to the arcade machine. How does but, that work, you know, wait, wait, wait. What's that look like? What, what do I type into Google? Um, it's, it's, it's the dance mat. Uh, <laughs> the dance uh, mat? Project Deep Arcade. Okay. So oh, the, is wait. It, could it, I... is, is, is it the one with the, the touchscreen? I've seen a couple of those in arcades. Uh, not exactly. Like, uh, So the thing with, with this <laughs> game is there are um, there are two gameplay styles in, um, in, Project D, in the Project Diva series and in Project Harvest too. That's the arcade style. That's played with four buttons and a slider bar, uh, which is the touch part. And then there's the um, the console style, which is played with mostly with a controller. It's made mm-hmm. to be played with a this controller. Uh, the game supports. Uh, but I, I haven't tried any controller that doesn't work with it. Like I, I've used a Guitar Hero controller with it, and it works. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the <laughs> best idea, but you can make it work. How many buttons do you need to play it, though, man? Um, I've actually made it made sure that you can play with one, with one hand. Um, okay. So generally, you need <laughs> you need around. It, if you're playing playing the arcade style, you need uh, six. If you're playing mm. the other style, you are gonna need um, eleven. Hmm. Okay, so it's not Cause, gonna... cause it does the shoulder yeah. buttons too, and yeah. No, uh, <laughs> so there are four basic nodes, which on the PlayStation are the triangle, square, circle, and X. Um, and on the other gameplay style, the console gameplay style, um, there are arrow nodes where you have to press. Mm-hmm. For example, you have to press. Um, let me get an example. You have to press B and D-pad on the same direction oh man uh, that, okay. i remember that I and mean, if you're old enough like with the original um master system uh, the genesis and, the, and you had to hold down start to access the top buttons that was right. a giant pain in the ass that's a cool so, thing that it's adaptable like that but yeah here's what i want to ask man because i know you mm-hmm. I, i'm just going to assume what like what came first uh, there wasn't just a random day that you were like you know what i'm gonna make a rhythm game deal with it world this is what i'm doing now and like what led up to that and was it like hey i've made all these other games or i've been doing this for x amount of years and i'm just going to apply it to this or was it i want to make a game and this is my first step into it man actually i had never done a game before like Mm -hmm. i've been i've been making games like i've been studying programming on my own for many years. I'm 20 years old now. Mm-hmm. Um, I started when I was eight. Mm. Um, so, you know, one day I was th- like, I, I had many uh, failed projects. I even tried to make adult games at one point um, mm-hmm. and that didn't work. <laughs> so I was thinking, I want to quit my job. Um, I, I need a game that will be, you know, will work with my strength, which is code. I'm not a very good artist. Um, so I thought, hey, I like this game. I know that already it's a clone of it, 
but it sucks. So I'm gonna make it better. And I did. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, so, so Heartbeat itself is written in Godot, right? Yes, it's made in Godot. So what, what drew you to that, uh, to that as opposed to something like Unity or Unreal or some of the more well-known engines? Well, uh, for making a rhythm game, source code access to the engine is a precondition. Mm -hmm. Because uh, a good example is Clone Hero. For Clone Hero, they had to write their own input stack for Unity. Mm. And I didn't want to do that. Well, I didn't want to, you know, touch Unity, but... Make, makes sense. Uh, <laughs> Um, so yeah, I, I, I've, I've always been a fan of free software. I'm a free software advocate. Okay. In fact, if, if, if I was, I originally wanted to become a teacher just to push free software in education. Um, Appreciate that. Yeah. Um, so Godot has been a thing I've been using for, for years already. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you've been able to follow like what the, cause what you say like last like four or five years ago? Well, four, three, three or four years ago, it's just made like leaps and bounds as far as its ability. From Not as many as you think, really. Like mm, following it um, from primarily two D to a three D engine. Yeah, but the three D stuff really isn't that behind the other engines. It's never really been behind the other engines for st stylized games. Mm. Obviously, uh, mm -hmm. four point brings all this fancy SDFGI uh, stuff. And it's very nice, but for stylized games, you could hack the engine to basically get the same results as in Unity. In fact, uh, one thing I want to add to the game is 3D uh, backgrounds with mm. characters dancing and all those things. And there's this guy called Fi I Fire on GitHub. Uh, he ported the M Tune shader, which is a standard um, tune shader, to Godot, and it's one one the same as in Unity. Hmm, okay. Like pixel by nice. pixel, it's the same thing. So <laughs> And and, and that um, one's open source too? Uh yeah. Yeah, like my fork of the engine is open source too. And the game will be open source one day. Okay. That that that's very good. Um so I mean obviously we're we're a Linux podcast. Your game is on Linux. What? We, 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 no. <laughs> really, I, 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 After nine did, years did, and you're finally telling me. <laughs> Did you show up expecting this to be BSD Gamecast? I thought we Mac were going to do Windows C from now on. Uh, ah, that, that's 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 absurd. Uh, Four hundred and fifty and above. <laughs> then um, no, but um, but yeah. Um, so you you do you do have the game out on Linux. Uh, Godot is a cross-platform engine. But did you find that like there was more work required to get it working under Linux? Was there any sort of pain points, or was uh, it a relatively I smooth process? That's assuming I work on Windows. I don't work on Windows. Uh, Ah, oh. ah. <laughs> I ups. make the game on Linux, and then I try to see if it works on Windows. And I have to tell you, Windows is a pain in the ass. Um, <laughs> the OpenGL drivers suck, all of them. Um, like, I'm, I'm playing the game on, on Linux, and I get, you know, 800, 900 FPS. And I'm like, okay, this is pretty good. And then I go on Windows, and I'm getting 250, and I'm like, okay, yeah, that's not... Very nice. Hey, it works. Why are you doing this? <laughs> no, it works, but then you have... Like, this is something that blew my mind. On NVIDIA Optimus, on Windows, there's an inherent one-frame delay if you are using non-exclusive full screen and or if you are using uh, OpenGL and there are frame pacing issues. And you know what's the solution to that? It's very funny. Mm. It's using exclusive full screen with DirectX 11. And the way, I, the way most people do it is they render the game off screen on OpenGL and then present the frame buffer on, on DirectX. Fascinating. It's, it's stupid. Huh. Mm -hmm. that, that sounds so delightfully Windows, though, doesn't it? And right. Yeah. It does. It's absolutely contrived. It's amazing. <laughs> so, uh, my, solution, so... my solution is better. I use Usangle and I make it work on Vulkan. Wow. Ah. There we go. Right. So uh, what, what distro are you developing on? Uh, I used to develop on Parabola. Uh, now I develop on Arch. Okay. Okay. So you run Arch? You run Arch? <laughs> yes, I run Arch. <laughs> okay. There we go. That's one tick uh, box. <laughs> no, uh, just, out of, just out of curiosity, do you notice any sort of like portability issues when like mo moving on something as or when shipping on something as bleeding edge as, as Arch towards like uh, something a little more behind like your Ubuntu's and your Suze's and whatnot? Or uh... Uh, yes. Uh, hmm. So the way Godot works, 
well, the way the way any program works. The problem is, uh, Arch uses a very new version of GLibC because it's a rolling release disco. So, mm. Valve, uh, they don't really, they didn't really explain this to me, but their target version of Ubuntu, they they like they actually test the games. I know. They do test the games before they get they get the green light to release them. Um, mm. They told me, hey, it doesn't work on. Um... Wait. Oh, Debian I, I 10. My... The my runtime. Steam... Uh, yeah, no, it's not Debian ten. It's uh, Ubuntu sixteen. Mm. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. I'm like, but that's ancient. So the only solution is to build it on Docker, which mm. makes my life a lot harder. Okay. How far back do you okay. go with like testing, though, man? Because like, it, I'll be honest with you. If somebody came to me and was like, "One well, doesn't work on Ubuntu 16," I'm like, "Well, that's nice." <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it works. I just compile it on Ubuntu 16. Mm. I, yeah. I mean, I guess, I guess for Steam, like with the Steam runtime. Yeah. Oh yeah, but it's very weird. Uh, I don't know why the Steam runtime doesn't really work with my game. Mm. Like, okay. it's it, it does very weird things. I. I I told them, and they were like, "Okay, we don't know either." Mm. I wonder if that's okay. kind of like an issue other people with good hunts run into. No, them. no, it's 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 an issue related because I ship you to the L with the game. Mm. Ah. I miss you to the L. So, yeah, interesting. Oh, is that how you're pulling music? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's that, that's how the community music is pulled and the videos okay. because right. they are background videos. Okay, that that makes sense. Um, so I'm so I guess, yeah, no. Uh, I see that the game is still in early access, and you've been in early access for a while. And you know, considering what the internet thinks about early access in general, how's it been for you? How's the experience from the developer side been? Uh, well, the first day, the first day when the game came out, like it was a bloody ripoff. The game sucked very hard. Now right. I think it's fine. Uh, so I <laughs> I got a lot of hate uh, at first. And, you know, even before release, I got a lot of hate. Because you know how the, um, the, the Vocaloid community, the Project Diva community, is mostly yes. made up of very young people. And you know how those people are. Um, they, they were like, oh, I hope Sega, Sega sues this guy. I hope... Um, <laughs> I hope your game gets taken down. Uh, your game is a ripoff. It sucks. So there was this girl telling me on DM, "Hey, can you make the game free so you don't have to pay the H two six five license?" Mm. Which I I'm like, no, I'm not gonna make the game free. I have to eat. Right. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I got I got I got a lot of hate, like a lot of slander, you know, all that stuff. Like, was very funny. Mm. The good thing is because in my case, all those things are false. They kinda ended up making the game. You know, more popular, right? Right, because yeah. any any no publicity, publicity is good publicity. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a fun story. Yeah. Uh, they they raided my server. Some <laughs> of the Projectiva people they raided my server, and like most of the people that came into my server ended up buying the game. <laughs> Excellent. Ah, oh, perfect. I was That's nice just perfect. <laughs> yeah. It's okay, so you fine. mentioned Project Diva a lot. Um, yeah. How's the uh... How would you rate the game in like um, between Project Heartbeat and uh, Project Diva and uh, Clone Hero? Would you say yours is the Dark Souls? Because I looked at the trailer oh, and really, you're going to do Dark Souls? <laughs> this, this, yeah, is I'm a going shtick, to bring man. Dark Souls. I, I, this, okay, I want to know who out there, who to. in the audience has a bet with Pedro for bringing up Dark Souls in a, uh, But yeah, or, would you say or, yours is the Dark Souls of the genre or? Is it more accessible for someone who's never tried anything like that? Mm, it's not Dark Souls, it's the Dark Horse. Uh, it's, okay. It's, it's not really hard to get into. Like, the official songs have very easy difficulties. Uh, it, it's not a hard game, unless you go for the hard songs. Mm -hmm. Right. That's, that's how it is. And there, there's a tutorial, there are many accessibility options. You can change practically everything you want. You can make, um, like, you can change the note icons. You can make your own icon packs, and in the future you will be able to mod many things. And I may, may, make a scripting API one day. Would 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 you have considered that the Dark Souls of interview questions? <laughs> um, no comment. 
No, so, uh, first, uh, first off, uh, you're a monster, Jordan Svahn. Uh, one thing, I, let, me, let me just get this out if I can. Sure. If I may. What got my attention, I'm not terribly into rhythm games, but I can respect it, um, was the tools that you've set up. Just looking oh. through the Steam page for creating your own levels. And, you know, what led you to that, man? Because you went deep on that. That's not just like, hey, man, you can import a song and see if you can keep up. This is like you can genuinely get into the guts of it. Uh, it's very funny. The editor is both the best and the worst part about the game. Because when it started, the editor was a mess, was so bad. So, so bad. But then I started updating it, and nowadays, you can import MIDIs to do the timing. You can import Guitar Hero MIDIs to do the timing. Uh, you can import Project Diva chart files. <laughs> uh, and you can do a lot of things with the editor. Like, the editor is... I'm so bloody proud of the editor. I, I was I was gonna ask, what's it like? Like, because the 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 community aspect of this is probably like the lifeblood of the project. You need them to like yep. make levels and stuff like that. So, what's it like? It, it's completely separate to making the game. What is it like making a tool that you are not only you are expected to use, but other people are expected to use? Here's the fun part: I don't actually use the editor. Oh, interesting. Um. Uh, because I don't make the charts. I pay people to make the charts for me. People that, you know, ah. ma ma making the charts is a dark art on itself. It's very complicated. <laughs> so I, I, I pay them and they usually don't use my tools because they are used to other tools. Uh, mm. So that's why I had to write a lot right. of porting uh, code. Okay. So that they, it's, it's, it's a bit funny that none of the official songs are made with the official editor, but <laughs> You know, that shows that at least the conversion code even, works. Even with the official editor, like, do you think, um, like, one of us does, does have enough of the sharp edges filed off to where we would stand a chance of being able to walk in and setting up our own thing using the built-in editor? Oh, for sure. Like, using the editor is not the hard part. Making a good chart is a hard part. Okay. Mm, that's fair. So yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's all game design. Like, there are pages of documents that people have made detailing how Sega makes the charts. And even Sega sometimes breaks them and makes very terrible charts. So... Gentlemen, there is a whole other side to this that... that this, yeah. yeah. The, 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 this is people who actually play <laughs> rhythm games and know what they're talking yeah. about. Yeah, I, I actually suck at the game. Like, I suck a lot. I'm not very good at the game. <laughs> did, did you know about, like, the community that you're going to run into when you started this project? Or... You know, oh, yeah. they come out of the woodworks and like, ah, well, actually, and you need to do it this way and comparing it to everything else. Like, man, I'm just trying to make this game and I think it's kind of fun. Chill the hell out. It, the community was very small at first, of mm. course. But, you know, I got a lot of people that knew about the game uh, come in and help me. Um, a lot of them ended up either loving me or hating me <laughs> because I make some... I don't really make controversial decisions. The game itself is a controversial part. Uh but it, it was planned that the game needs a community to succeed. Like, it, mm -hmm. that was not out of the question. Uh, that's a necessity. The game needs the community because there's only so much I can make. Like, the official Project Diva game has 100 charts. There's no way I can match that. Like, 100 charts, 3 minutes per song, 4 difficulties per song. There's no way I could match that. It's, it's impossible because I have to license the songs. <laughs> Well, well, that that right. and there's making making the game itself versus making the levels, and you're just a one man project, right? Like so. Yeah, I have to. So there are the only two things I don't make are the background art for the songs, mm -hmm. and the charts themselves, and obviously the songs themselves. But everything else, the UI art, the um, everything else, the the notes, all of that stuff, I make it myself. And in fact, I'm so lazy. No, well, not lazy. I'm so unskilled with uh, graphical design that the notes, they are not actually made by me. I wrote a Python script to make them. <laughs> Excellent. That, that, that is a proper that's, programmer that's solution. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you, 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 will not, you will not find any hate on this show no. for that. No, but it's not, it's not a bad thing because you actually can keep a consistent style effortlessly. Oh, yeah. So. Now, yeah, on, the, on the topic of, you see you license the audio, how stream safe is this? Because we saw, you know, last month, Twitch was like, all of a sudden, hey, by the way, don't stream copyrighted music that you don't have a license to, or we're going to come down on you. But we're not going to tell you which video it was, just delete everything in your VODs. So if I'm playing Project Heartbeat, do I have anything to worry about when I'm streaming? 
for the official songs, you don't have anything to worry about. The, mm -hmm. the, the, the people that license them to me, they are usually very friendly about community stuff. Like, they are mostly, there are some Doho covers on it. Um, so, so do, do, you, do, you get the, do you get the music from, like, independent artists or, like, are fans submitting it or? Um, I get them from anywhere I can because, you know, it's an indie game. <laughs> I, right. I have to set up, it's, it's very complicated. Um, mm. So the, the, the main songs, they come from a, a Eurobeat artist circle called Sugano Music. And I talked to Mr. Sugano, like I, I was talking to many producers. I talked to people like from, you know, from Italy, like, you know, Eurobeat mm. was mo born in Italy. So I talked to some famous, um, some famous artists and this might seem like a deja vu. Um, hey, I get I, that. <laughs> I, I talked to, to these people and they were like, hey, what countries do you want the license from? And I'm like, it's, it's a digital game, all of them. And that, that was the end of the conversation. Uh, <laughs> because they don't have a right to Japan and all those places. And I'm like, Japan is my second biggest market. I need Japan. Yeah. So I yeah. talked to Sugano, he's, he's from Japan, and he was like, I, I told him, like, I, I threw a, you know, I, I, I threw a fishing rod and see if it worked. And he was right. like, yeah, sure. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, that's lucky. Pretty good. Very and nice. then the, the other songs, they come from independents that give them to me for free. Okay, so. cool, cool. Is there ever any worries about that? Because I know um, just doing some of the basic streaming that we do, and I always like to have a little bit of background music. I've had stuff that was uh, previously, you know, a band had come out and they just released it on like free music archive and stuff like that, Creative Commons come to find like three years later then they get signed then their labels like no this is all ours now you ever have, well i guess you wouldn't have to worry about that now right i mean i i have agreements set up yeah, so i have to out. worry yeah. about that that's yes. so um, smart of you man so smart yeah. of you to take yeah. care of that i i don't have to do anything but you know at the end of the day the song list is growing so much that right. uh, if one artist pulls out i'm like okay yeah can go so but what? but but you know at that point what what I do before removing the song is um, add some tools to extract the songs from the game because people paid for the fucking song. Right. Pe Fair. People paid for the game and they expect the content to be there. And if you are mm -hmm. removing it from them, then you know I'm not the asshole. Right. It's it's the label or whoever. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that's really uh, that that's well thought out. Hundred yeah. percent. You gonna guess? And uh, what was the? Uh, the motivation uh, I saw you drop the uh, deja vu uh, pun there. <laughs> what was the motivation behind Eurobeat specifically? Because I get it. Part of me absolutely gets it because I have the one of the Eurobeat YouTube playlists just on a loop going while I'm playing racing games, and that works for me. But what was it for you that uh, sort of drove you to it? Well, I got into cards years ago. That's how right. I ended up at my job. I used to be a racing simulator developer oh, uh, right. at a certain uh, F1 team with a very French name. Um, Lotus. And... Lutris? <laughs> <laughs> McLaren. Well, it could be. It could be I mean, the, the latest iteration of Lotus was a French team. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it, appropriate it was, joke, it, Pedro Mateus. Yeah, <laughs> it might be. It might be. It, it might. It might. It may or may not be the Enstone team, also known as Alpine, also known as Renault, also known as Lotus. Um, uh, and then I worked for a small company, and they sacked me because I called the boss a cunt. I'll do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Major kudos from all of us, <laughs> but yeah, that'll do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, mean, I mean, I mean, if you're working for 500 euros on an internship contract and they expect you to oh. work as if as if you were paying me 2,000 euros a month, mm -hmm. I'm not going yeah. to put any effort into it, mate. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not yeah, here for that. that and then he used excuse point. of coronavirus to, to fire me because it happened like at the same time as coronavirus dropped. So. Mm. So uh, I guess I guess where's where's the future for Project Heartbeat? Where, where what do you kind of hope to see the project move towards? Uh, or is this are you sort of happy with the state right now? And is no, are I, you? I, yeah, I, was sorry. Gonna say, I was just gonna say, are you planning on working on anything other than Project Heartbeat? Are we gonna see any more projects from you? Or um, so the first question. Um, I'm never happy with the game. I cannot be happy with the game. Never. I, I my mind doesn't work that way. That's, so yes, that's it's, standard it's, creative. 
Yeah. It's gonna change. I don't know how it's gonna change. Like I might wonder. Like the the three D uh, stuff. I I I abandoned it some time ago because I thought, nah, there's no way I can do this. And then you know, I've learned a lot making this game. I've learned a lot of stuff, and I'm like, I can do it now. I have the tools, and I know I, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do for the three D stuff for the official songs at least is I'm gonna buy a bunch of Kinects, and I'm gonna force. I mean. Uh, persuade a friend mm -hmm. that does dancing to do dancing for the songs. Okay. Um, Somebody's finally so, going to have a practical use for the connect. Yeah. yeah. That's no, basically actually, been the only use. <laughs> I learned there's a, there's an enterprise version of the connect now. What? It's called the Azure I've, connect. That sounds like some horseshit Microsoft would do. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. Thousand yeah. Dollars. <laughs> It's 300 and something euros for the dev kit. <laughs> no way I'm paying that money. I can buy a... I, I have my old Kinect very cheap. And uh, for the second question you asked, which is what I'm going to do next, I have no idea either. Uh, I started working on a racing simulator now, but I don't okay. know how it's going to work. Big fan. I, yeah, I, I run Do keep Jordan's, us posted. Yeah. <laughs> Pay yeah, myself. I mean, Huge My racing. idea is... So no. if, you guys, if you guys have played Art of Rally, I don't know if you guys have we, seen that game. We did. Yeah. Uh, so my idea is to do basically an equivalent of Art of Rally, but for highway racing. Okay. Okay. So and, personal and request. I, Feel free to ignore it. Just, you know, give us a low down camera, like no. third person behind the car rather than the top no, one. No, I, I can show you a screenshot. If you, yeah, oh, I can really? share it here on the, I don't know where I can share it. Uh, uh, if you, if you, if you, yeah, that would be difficult to pull off. Right yes. Now. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what, here's what we, you can we, do. We can, Email can, it to me and I'll put it in post. Yeah. Fix it yes. in post. <laughs> okay. And, and if anyone wants to see it, it's, it's on the, it's on my Harvey Twitter. Um, it's a test model of a Porsche 911 turbo. Okay. Like the old one, the cool mm -hmm. one. Um, mm -hmm. and I it's in good too. Uh, and I'm actually considering making that one open source from the start. So I don't know what I'm going to do. Okay. But you know, well, what? The super uh, tax card needs some competition? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like I, I've played the open source racing simulators. Some of them are okay, but. Is this going to be a hard sim or are you going to throw, like, a, throw me a little bone for like a little bit of arcade? It's, it's actually very easy to go the other way around. Mm. Um, it's like, I don't know if you guys have seen the, the Grand Tour. These, these two have. I haven't yeah. watched any of it yet. So yes. they, they made a game about it. Um, oh, right. And there's this very, there's a simulator that all racing teams use called R Factor. Um, that game uses the physics module from R Factor because it's very easy to just give a simulation model, you know, ridiculous uh, numbers of grip, and it's very easy to drive. So that's how they do it. And, you know, I'm going to make it moddable, of course. So. If people want to make hardcore cars, they can make them. Is wait for a physics engine? Is that what is that an open source engine like Bullet or? Yeah, factor. No, it's, it's not open source. No. I'm, I'm actually my game. I'm testing it with something called Project Coronos, which is not made for real time. Okay. So it's mm. it's it's a bit of a. It's not really working very well, but <laughs> could be worse. That's pretty wild, okay. man. I think that's it, right? Are we covered? Yeah. Are we good? Yeah. Hang on. Uh, I suppose there's one one last question. How dare uh, you? For this. For the sake of the uh, some people in our audience, and given you know, you mentioned the backgrounds and this, getting people dancing and this whatnot. Is such a Pedro, will there be personal question from Pedro? Will there be an eighteen plus patch? Uh I would love to actually, but I don't see how the hell they're gonna do eighteen plus in a music game. Oh, oh life I'm just finds talking a way. about the backgrounds. <laughs> life finds a way, Alex. Oh, actually, uh, here's something that not many people know. Um, one of my friends, one of my very close friends, she's called Emily. Um, she makes some of the background art for the game. Mm -hmm. um, there are actually R18 versions of a lot of the official artwork. No. Oh. Okay. That's only for me. Well, you see, Pedro, now you can tell your mysterious friend that. Um, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Maybe, yes maybe, mysterious maybe, friend. Maybe, maybe throw a link to her Etsy or something. Throw some, also give her some support. <laughs> so, uh, 
if we're going to be searching for it, it's Project Heartbeat on Steam. That's the only thing you're going to find, and it is there. It's available not only just for Linux, it's developed on Linux using Godot. It's brilliant. It's a nice piece of art. Go play with it. What is it currently right now? If we're going to be using Freedom Dollars, it's eleven ninety nine. What's that in Britannia? <laughs> Uh, uh, over here, it is nine pounds twenty nine. Nine twenty nine Canadian moose bucks. Uh, it is thirteen dollars forty nine cents. That sounds brilliant, man. Um, any it parting... does go on sale a lot. So. It does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, nice. W- when do you see being able to put a bow on it? I know you said you know perpetual <laughs> development. I hundred <laughs> percent. I know those feels, but yeah. point release. When do you think that'll? Uh... Point of release when there are. I mean, I if I was me, if it was me, I'd actually release it now. Mm. Uh, but because the only thing that the game really lacks is content. Okay. Like it, just needs, it just needs more official songs. Easiest so, way for somebody to get a hold of you or how can they contribute to it? Um, in the forums uh, on Steam, bus place? Or? The, the best places. Unfortunately, we have to use a proprietary platform because that's what everyone uses. So I, we have a Discord. Okay. Um, your, uh... The Discord is on, on our Twitter. Our Twitter is uh, at be heartbeat game and you can find me no, there pretty... you can right. also talk to me on twitter or whatever you want like i have many ways and you can find the most of them on the twitter okay happy heartbeat game cool stuff at the heartbeat game uh, the heartbeat game the no v p p yeah p, 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 p for project papa Oh, yeah. Papa Heartbeat Game. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I heard it right the first time. Go me. I can hear things. <laughs> I know I'm that bombshell. Um, <laughs> thanks again for showing up, Alex. Um, that, this is nice. Pleasure, man. Yeah. And I wish you the best of luck with this. And I, I love yeah. something that is community driven, too. I mean, there's the incentive to have the community produce new content for it and it, i just love that the you went through the trouble of creating the tools to where somebody like me i could walk in and stand the slightest of chances of being able to make something with it mm-hmm. you can try, it's not I can try. Be. listen man i'm gonna walk in with my uh, dreamcast fishing controller and i'm gonna fuck up some like levels man <laughs> what does goto use sdl2 for uh input uh no it's on. No. Oh, it's okay. got its own system. Yeah. Uh, the only SDL thing it uses is the controller database. Okay. Which is probably why all your controllers work. Because right. yeah, that'll do it. Yeah, because I mean, the they work. Too. They work even even if they are not in the database. But, mm. Yeah. That's just the default yeah. bindings. That is brilliant. All right, J Baby, take us out. All right. Coming up next, we have hate mail. Full of hates. Not for, not for Alex though. None He's for great. Alex. And a big, big thank you to Alex for joining us for that, because that it's not every day that you get to talk to someone who's actually a blue jean shirt. Uh, No, that's just a really old black T-shirt that's uh, been progressively more and more discolored over the past 10 or so years. So it's not a Canadian tuxedo? No. No. (laughs) Is is, Is it a Portuguese tuxedo? Wait a minute. Do you have any sudden urges to... Chop a tree down. Put on women's clothing, <laughs> hang around in bars. <laughs> no, it's just, it's the oldest shirt I have, and uh, it's comfy. I like it. It's just, yeah, losing its color. So, yeah. If you'd like to let me know just where I can buy a new shirt, or if you have any shirt recommendations, please Store feel free to go fuck yourself. Com, Pedro. Uh, the- <laughs> Why don't you buy or a new that, shirt from- That's better, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, uh, contact uh, the contact form on LinuxGameCast.com if you hit the contact button. You can just, well, you can read what it says. If you're a game developer, you'd like to get in touch to say you talk about your game, please feel free to use that. If you'd like us to play your game, make sure to include three keys, because if you don't, well, it's not going to end well for No, you. I'm going to send you one just and you saying. can enable family sharing. I mean, we're we're just a bunch of shiny, pap- happy people holding hands. So mm-hmm. maybe we can work something out with like each one of us using one end of the controller. I mean, I kind of already have to do that, but hey. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> but, hmm, not, <laughs> I'm just thinking USB over Ethernet exists. We just got to find a way to break up a controller so we can co-op some shit. Right. 
Do, do it okay. with Starlink. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's the trick. <laughs> oh man! All right, uh, we, we we got we got a piece of hate mail from Lumkey. Uh, they're talking about recurring payments, and they say e-curring payments have been there for a bit, maybe over a year. I got surprised one day when I was playing MMO called Rift. Then seen I got charged for monthly payment in Steam. Only part is buggy. Depend on the game may get charged, but it end up not getting the game time. So. You, you bring this up, and I was reading through the show notes uh, before we went live just to, like, refresh myself. And, yeah, they were talking about recurring payments in one of the articles uh, when they were talking about the Steam yearly update about how uh, they've integrated with uh, EA. So, apparently, it's been around longer than that. It's just enabled on a per-game basis. So, yeah. Uh, Lomkey, good on you for the fact, ch- the fact check. Eh. I was Rift. genuinely curious. I hadn't man. heard the na- that name in a long time. Well, we had a couple of people who dropped some uh, YouTube comments. They're like, yeah, recurring. And I think Chibs like, sent, uh, gave me an at mention on Twitter. He's like, yep, that's what I used. I think it was another MMO. And he's like, yeah, ah, it makes perfect sense. I guess we're just not the MMO. Yeah, there, there's probably not, not a lot of the those... recurring payment MMO kind. No, yeah. <laughs> you you also have to got to, have to imagine there's not a lot of those games on Linux, so we wouldn't necessarily have talked about them. Fair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, have we ever talked about retro Linux gaming? Man? Never. Okay. Never ever. Fine. Fine. Be like that. <laughs> uh, this comes from LibreQuest. Like, hey, man. Glad I have these sweet games, you know, because we were talking about Mad Max scene and Tomb's uh, feral dropping support for that because, you know, the contract, the WE fell off. It's like I recently set out on a mission to see if I could get my first Linux distro to game on hardware from the same year with Loki Games. Oh, I remember those days. <laughs> and after weeks of hardware changes and software testing, I have had success. My goal was to install Mandrake 7.2. I remember that. Alien. Uh, no changes, just on the disc, can't believe. Miracle of Beauty and Sound, da, da, da. and older, um, and the box copy was from January 2000. You opened it, it's worthless now. <laughs> um, pretty sweet, I posted about it on Phronix forums, under graphics cards, NVIDIA drivers were tortured, mm, no, okay, and they kept fighting with the AGP, oh yeah, I remember that. Mm. And I remember compiling um, DRI when it was experimental. Uh, <laughs> dude, it was next level being able to play a game in a window inside of X. It's like, what the fuck with 3D acceleration? Um, my post in Reva TNT, didn't have a DNT, I had 3D Fox and went straight to NVIDIA. Anyway, uh, just fantastic. And the music and heavy metal effect too. It's, that's the only Loki title I don't own. What was on that soundtrack? Um, I don't know. I, don't know. I, I didn't have a Reva TNT too, but I had the original Reva TNT that 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 was my first like proper dedicated uh GPU that that uh, yeah oh, <laughs> oh, Alan oh, Alan hang on Alan Al, Alan writes in live anyone use Gliden 3D <laughs> sweetheart that was the only thing if you wanted um 3D acceleration it was Glide you know uh what was it uh Unreal Tournament everything had Glide support like there was some experimental open jail support on 3d effects hardware and that was dog shit um compared to like glide and glide 2 then 3d effects fucked itself and nvidia bought the uh remaining fucks that were left and then everything just kind of started working then amd man amd geez on like all of 2000 up until they open sourced their drivers formerly ati were absolute dog shit Completely. Oh, God damn, FGLRX was so bad. I mean, well, you, uh, it, uh, those the, of you that here, have tried thing. AMD GPU, you have no idea. To this day, <laughs> AMD can't make a fucking Linux driver. Uh, go they can't with, make a Windows driver either. Well, okay, I'm just going to say, man, AMD themselves, go get the um, AMD Pro drivers for any, and run that shit under Linux, because the only time you would do that is because an application has forced you to. Yeah. Okay. So I I looked up the the heavy metal fact two soundtrack. So we have Monster Magnet, Pantera, uh, MDFMK, which is, apparently is not KDFDM. I think. Um, you got Insane Clown Posse. Okay. <laughs> Sys- Fucking system- magnets. How do they work? System of a Down, uh, Machine Head, uh, Billy Idol, and Bauhaus. 
Uh, that sounds like a list of shit we can stream, doesn't it? <laughs> Probably not. Yes. No, yeah. don't stream that on Twitch, that's, or you will get your voice deleted. A, mute the music, and yeah, <laughs> that that was kind of sad, man. With the Victor Vran when they sent us the keys the, the, for the, the motorhead, the motorhead and we're yeah. like, well, fuck. The whole point of this is the motorhead soundtrack, and nope, can't stream any of it. Nope, oh, can't. Sad face. Yeah, I guess on that sad face, can it be a sad face bombshell? Yes. Is it like a it, hot tub sex machine or something? It goes. Cue the music. You can always <laughs> find us around 830 Eastern Standard Moon Time. Unless you are one of our party patrons, come hop in Discord a little bit early, like an hour a little bit early, uh, where we have our pre-pre-super shows and our production meeting. And, you know, we say the things that can only be said there. Don't knock us out. If you want to get in touch with me, I'm just at Vin Stone. On Twitter, that's where I'm there. I'm posting things like my hipster PCI sound card. It's kind of brilliant. And uh, just at Vin on our federated Mastodon instance, uh, mast.linuxgamecast.com. I'm Jordan Swung. I'm still trying to figure out how magnets work. I keep trying to hold them up to my hard drives and they stop working. Maybe there's some kind of connection there. If you want to give me <laughs> magnet advice, uh, head on over to twitter.com slash theburningfool. Or I'm also at Twitch, twitch.tv slash burning fool, where I need to stream more because I stopped doing that. <laughs> and I suppose you could tell me about my uh, really crappy shirt or my beautiful, bright uh, KD I neon it was pants. Made out of blue. I never said it was, I never said a negative thing about it. So go fuck yourself. <laughs> you can go to at uh, unaccounted for on Twitter or. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Unaccounted for or uh, on uh, the Night Riders uh, <laughs> Need for Speed go, World. Go, 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 go to the little time there. Go, I was going to say, go to the Cambridge NHS office and yell at Pedro. <laughs> Just yell at the building. There's a few. <laughs> oh, man. We got all the people we got to thank. Especially uh, Alex for showing up for the interview. But we got to thank the people who are making this possible. Patrons of Majestic Awesomeness! Yeah, we got LDS Barbara, Scott Michaud, Memphis Fox Dog, Arthur and Atomic Ass, Mike G, MT. Got our little Nicky fans, Darkwing, our Sea Monsters, I'm Jack B. I'm disappointed in all of you who watched that fucking video I released. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ryder X Machina, Paul, Vera Danuta, Justin, and Frosty Claw. Uh, we need Basil on the Sea Monsters now. <laughs> all right. Oh, all right, shit. Uh, roll it back. We got to re- gotta redo the entire podcast. <laughs> Take two. We fucked, can't up, have we that. fucked up the credits. No, too no, no. <laughs> but yes, thank you to one and all, uh, Sherry Wig, Winter Cell, Jolly M, Daniel L, uh, Vascal, Jonas Rulo, Dodger, Dementor, and our newest Patreon, Zeno. Thank you and all very, the, very much. Uh, web zone that doesn't exist, Jordan. Doesn't exist. <laughs> Never existed. I don't even know why it's there. Live Broad DVD slash Nexus Pyramid. Damn it, you gotta Woo. memorize at this point, don't you? Yeah. Yep. We'll you see forgot you the app, but okay. Five dudes. <laughs>